Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today we're going to be making bonsai from an azalea. All right, so this is the azalea that we're going to be working on here today. And it's this great big giant bushy shrub that you could just find in a garden center. And I can see the label on the top of it here says Azalea japonica, Isabel. And I think out of all of the flowering bonsai species, azalea would probably be my favorite one. And as you can see from the little card that came with this azalea, this one happens to grow beautiful pink flowers. And if I look close, I can already see on it some of the flowers are just at the very, very early stages of beginning to bloom. When working on azalea, if you wish to let the tree flower and then come back and work on it, I don't mind not having flowers this year when I work on this particular tree. All I would really like to do today is get this tree into a nice pot and give it a basic shape. And then the following year, I can then enjoy the flowers. And now whenever you get an azalea like this from a place like a garden center, there's one of two possibilities that you will encounter when it's in the pot like this. First of all, you could get extremely lucky and this big shrub here could be one tree with a single trunk in the very center of this, which is, from my experience, a rare case, but a very lucky case because if you have all this growth on one trunk, because of all this growth, that trunk would be quite thick. And then the second case that you'll encounter is lots of azaleas planted in the one pot to create a bush. So the first thing I would do is when I look at the tree in the garden center is take it from below eye level, lift it up, look inside and see what you have to work with. And with this one, based on what I can see above the soil level, this is multiple trunks, multiple trees in the one pot. The tools that I will be using in this video today are some root printing shears, chopstick, some wire cutters, satsuki shears or twig cutters, some branch cutters, a root hook, a root rake, and some gin pliers. Now, by no means do you have to use all of these specialized tools for bonsai. I wanna try and keep my videos as easily accessible to anyone who is new to bonsai. And whenever I got started, I just got by with a cheap pair of garden scissors. Just make sure that whatever tool you do use is clean and sharp because a clean cut will heal a lot faster than a sort of cut that where the branch is squashed. I would first like to remove some of the soil on the top layer of this tree as there is a possibility that all of these trees may be connected in one trunk just below the soil surface here. I don't wanna start pulling things before I fully know what's going on under the soil. And now again, I'm coming in with this big massive drip tray just to catch any soil that might fall off of this. And it's just started raining. I'm just gonna wind out this little wind cover here. All right, that's much better. It rains so much here in Ireland. So whenever I work on trees in the rain, I just like to put this thing up. So without damaging the pot, I'm gonna see if I can get this out. Right, that came out fairly easily. And if you look really close here at the roots, you can see that azaleas have this almost spider web like root to them. So I'm just gonna take the root hook and start to hook away at the top of the soil here. And with working on azaleas, you will inevitably tear through some of the azalea root as it's so fine and fibrous. But so long as we don't remove too much, this tree should be okay. Or multiple trees, we don't know what's in here yet. Now, if you're wondering when the best time to repot an azalea is, I would say to repot them maybe every two to four years. In Japan, they like to repot azalea just after the tree has finished flowering. You know, whenever it gets into the very start of the rainy season. But I would say to repot early spring. You can see the roots here that's coming off of this. They are super, super fine. So as I look inside here, I think it could possibly be two quite thick trees together, maybe three but definitely not like the five or six trees that I previously thought when the soil was up higher. So this is why it's important to dig away this top layer before doing anything. And because the roots of an azalea are so fine and fibrous, they can quite easily dry out as you're working on them. So what I like to do is keep a spray bottle quite handy so I can just mist the roots as I work and that way they don't dry out. All right, so there is a bit of a flex at the bottom here, which tells me that there is separate trees there, but to really get these easily separated, I'm going to need to loosen up all of this root ball. And I know anyways, I'm probably gonna be removing about this much root. So I'm just gonna take a saw and cut a cross section off of this. I know this might look a little bit crazy, but in bonsai, it's okay to do things like this. I would probably have ended up raking away and tearing all these roots off anyway. So by sawing through like this is really no problem. This saves you a lot of time. 
So we've got all of that removed. It's like a slice of cake. And you can even see here at the center of that, there's still lots of healthy fine roots coming through the soil. And again, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, or just if you need a refresher, when you work on the roots of a tree and you're raking them like this, you always wanna rake radially and outward from the trunk. Never do I wanna go and pull roots and wind them around the trunk. And the same goes for if you're working on the bottom, always raking outward. Now the fine fibrous roots will develop again, but as you work on an azalea, you'll start to see these slightly bigger ones that aren't so spiderweb-like. They're the ones that we really wanna keep. I'm gonna try and pull these apart now and see what we can do. A little bit at a time. Don't wanna tear anything, I'm just teasing it apart. And if it doesn't wanna give yet, I can just continue to rake a little bit more. I really know they're connected down here somewhere at the base. Now this is just how I would work on azalea. There are some really talented expert azalea growers out there. And I think there's even societies and clubs of people that only specialize in azalea bonsai. And some of the azaleas that they have are absolutely beautiful to look at at exhibitions. And if any expert azalea growers are watching this video, if you have any tips, it would be greatly appreciated down in the comments below. I'm always open to different ways of doing things and new ideas in bonsai. So still just trying to keep misting this. Oh, it's getting a little bit looser. Okay, let's see now. It's really starting to loosen. They definitely aren't connected at the base. So now I'm just gonna slowly just tease these apart, gently. This is how they're separating here. I'm just breaking the part here. And each of the trees will have plenty of roots to sustain themselves. All right, so that's this one. It's got plenty of roots. And this one, which I believe is actually two trees. So I'm gonna put this one aside and let's try and separate this one. All right, and that's that one separated. I was just wearing some sunglasses as I was working on the roots because as I raked at them, pieces of soil started flicking out hitting me right in the eye, so I would advise eye protection. But we did get three beautiful bonsais from that big bush that we started with. This is the first one. It's got lots to work with up here. The second one, which has got really nice movement and a lot of foliage. And the third one, again, this one has a lot of foliage and this one has the thickest trunk out of them all. And it was fairly inexpensive too for that big clump that I bought, I think was maybe five pounds, so about maybe five or six dollars. Now before we repot this azalea, I'm just gonna give the roots a light wash to try and loosen up some more soil. So we've got this basin of water here. I'm just gonna give it a little swish. And as I work on this tree and repot it, I have these other two trees just sitting in a basin of water just to keep the roots wet so they don't dry out. It is okay to have trees sitting in water like this for a little short time. I'm just gonna leave some soil in this. I don't wanna completely bare root this tree. There is some roots here that were probably off the other tree that's just falling off. I would like to clean up the trunk a little from any of these just to help me determine a front when I'm choosing a planting angle. I'm just cutting off any of these shoots that's growing on the inside of the trunk. It already has mesh on the bottom here for us, so we don't really need to add any bonsai mesh like we would on a ceramic pot. But I would like to wire the tree in, so to do that, I'm taking some two millimeter aluminum bonsai wire. And first I'm going to measure it so that we don't waste any of our wire along the bottom and up the side here. I'm just gonna cut that with some of the wire cutters. And we just flip the pot over and feed the wire up through the bottom here. Make sure that it's nice and flat on the bottom. And then I'm gonna do the same across this way. And now when it comes to the specific soil type that you use for growing your azalea, I have found lots of different growers have their own special bonsai mix that they like to use for planting their azaleas into. But as a general rule, azaleas tend to like a more acidic, low pH type soil. So planting them into something like Japanese kunuma with a mix of sphagnum moss just to keep humidity up is a generally good mix to use. Kunuma for me isn't really easily accessible in my area. So I have adapted and found my own soil mix that I use on all of my azaleas. And over the last maybe three, four years, all my azaleas have done quite well 
in this mix for the region that I live in. And it is good to note that I do use a special azalea fertilizer. So this might have something to do with bringing the pH to the right level in the soil. But my general mix is a mix of pumice, agadama, lava rock, and then I like to cut up sphagnum moss really finely and mix it through all of the soil. And I find the azaleas are quite happy in that. I'm gonna get the soil mix into this little pot and I'm just gonna make a small batch in the pot as I do it. In goes my nice bonsai soil mix. And then here I've got my sphagnum moss, which I'm gonna cut up. And I have found for all trees, sphagnum moss is just a fantastic stuff to mix in with your soil. And I can just mix it in here with my metal chopstick. I would say that's pretty evenly distributed in this pot. Now I'm gonna come in with this little azalea. I would like to bury it a bit, so I'm just gonna shimmy it down in the pot. Fold it over. And then I'm gonna twist the wire to anchor the tree in the pot and push the wire down. Some people like to cut the wire here. Most of the time I don't, as I like to easily unwind it. And because this tree isn't really going into an exhibition or anything like that, I don't really need to worry about its current presentation. And now again, with these other two pieces of wire, I'm just gonna cross them over. And then on top of that, a little bit more soil. It's important that you give azaleas a good deep pot like this one here. If you were to try and squeeze this into a little small pot, I have found azaleas generally don't like to be in really compactified small pots. Just gonna work out the air gaps here now with this chopstick. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. And now I'm gonna do the exact same type of repot on the other two trees. And now here is the three trees fully repotted into some fresh bonsai soil. But these two here, because they were quite thin and small, I felt they were okay to put into a little bonsai training pot. But with this one here, I didn't really want to try and squeeze it into a little tiny training pot. So I put it into a much larger pot. But because we did remove so much root off of these trees today, I'm now gonna prune the top of the tree in order to balance the vigor between the roots and the foliage. I determined this as the front and another possible front could be this side. The front of a bonsai is mostly down to personal preference, but there are a few guidelines we can follow when it comes to determining the front. First of all, which side of the tree has the thickest root flare? This one is mostly the same thickness the whole way around. Then I like to look at what is the most interesting trunk line, and I felt that here is, because if you look at the tree from this side, you can't really see the nice split that's going on here. And I feel that this middle branch here is getting in the way of this nice split in the trunk. All right. Yeah, I think that definitely opens it up a little. You can definitely see through it more. That will allow light into these lower areas to help them develop. I don't like to use cut putty on azaleas. I find they don't really need it. But if you wish to, you can. I'm thinking, how can I reduce the tree to this height so that in the future it will back bud and we can get it even lower maybe? And that's one design option. Another design option could be to leave it as this nice, elegant, slender trunk line where the soft lines are the design of the tree. Not every tree has to be thick trunk, good taper. Sometimes in bonsai, this could be what you're looking for. So when pruning on the azalea, I like to keep some leaves on the branch that I prune just so the sap still flows up. And whenever you prune an azalea, you want each branch to split into two branches. You can see once it gets to here, it splits so many times there's one two three four five and what i would like it to do is come up and just split into two so here's how we do that we just remove the ones we don't think we need so now as you can see that branch comes up and splits into two and that's the principle of pruning that i'm going to use all over this tree and the other trees on these here also, I could just take off the flower heads. I know it's quite sad doing that this time of the year because azaleas have quite beautiful flowers, but it is for the health of the tree and we will get flowers next year. This one comes up, it's got a side branch, not too worried about that. It does split here, so one goes here, which is this tiny one, and then this other one is quite long. Yeah, that little one is the new leader of that branch. I'll keep some flowers on it this year, so I'll let them grow and I can print it hard here next year. If I ever come to the scenario where there's three branches and one of them branches is way stronger than the other two, I'll prune back to the two weakest ones. That way the growth is denser.
that is all I've taken off of it. It's quite a lot of foliage, but I feel like this tree will do quite well now, not having to feed so much foliage. So this is tree number two, and I have determined this as the front for this tree. When planting it, I did see the tree had sort of a, a bend in it, a curve in the trunk, and I contemplated planting it at that angle and having this as the front to accentuate that curve bend. But when looking at the trunk line, you can't really see that beautiful silhouette that you can see from this side. And although it does bellow forward towards the viewer, I think I'm gonna wire these branches back like this to really open up the tree and show it all off. And this branch could probably fill that gap. There really is a lot to work with on this tree and I'm not gonna prune this tree back as hard as I did the last one. So first thing I'm gonna do is get some wire on this. Azaleas don't really like to be superly strong wired. It can look a little bit unnatural. I've got a really good example of an unnaturally wired azalea that I did when I was just learning. It's very leggy in growth, this tree. All the leaves are only at the ends of the branches. So I'll probably give this a little trim now, but you can see here where I wired it before. I wired the branch up and it looks kind of strange having this bend on it, plus this one here. There is a nasty cut on this side, which I covered with cut putty. And now thinking about it, azaleas don't really need that. Look at that. I think that'll do quite fine. It's healing over itself. Anyways, my idea is to remove this branch entirely. And then for the taper, I'm gonna cut it at an angle. And now this will be the trunk line of the tree. I think it looks a lot better. I'll come back a different day and print this leggy foliage, but I'm gonna just move on to the next tree. So I just grabbed a little piece of scrap wire. This is two and a half millimeter aluminum bonsai wire. And I'm gonna use that just to wire these branches up a little. Again, the two branch principle, I'm gonna use one piece of wire and wire these two branches together, anchoring each branch to the other. I'm gonna just come around, careful not to crush any of these new shoots that's developing. Be very delicate. Azaleas have quite soft bark too, so you gotta be careful with that. Then I'm gonna come around this trunk. I'm just gonna bend this slightly up. Be very careful with these branches because if you bend azalea branches too far, they will just snap on you and that's no good. And if they do, you can find a different design and style for your tree, but it'd be really nice if it didn't snap. I'm gonna remove this branch here at the front as it just sort of feels like it's at the wrong place and this tree would make a much better style as a twin trunk. If you wish to keep it, you can, but I felt like that didn't really need that. And that looks so much better. I can actually pull these together a little. So I've straightened the trunks as much as I would like to now. Just sort of gonna give it like a profile cut. So anywhere that I feel is too high, gonna get in the profile cut. So like up here, almost like just a silhouette cut. And the shape I'm going for is this sort of dome shape so here it's a little bit too much could that be wired down that's another idea maybe in the future yeah i'm gonna leave it at that i think that's quite a lot of printing for this little tree and we are gonna get flowers on this one this year so when it does flower i'll post it on instagram so you guys can see the beautiful pink flowers and if you don't follow me on instagram it's just at notion bonsai all right let's move on to the third and final tree so as you can see with this final tree it is really congested it's got a lot of foliage on the top here which isn't necessarily a bad thing you could leave this and maybe all of this foliage would stay alive and healthy because this particular tree did have quite a lot of roots down at the bottom here. But just for structural reasons, I would like to come in and just prune all of these branches so that each of the branches then splits into two at the ends. And I would like to keep these little bottom back buds of the azalea as whenever I prune the top of this tree, more light is gonna be able to reach the inside. I'm gonna keep this one, but I think the only one I could take out is this one because it's growing sort of inwards towards everything. So. That one would probably be the only exception. And there's just a few branches at the back here that are leaning down and they don't really go with that sort of formal upright trunk style. And I think they need to go. So that's that one gone. So we're almost there with the design now. There's just this final back branch here. So now if you look at the structure, you can see here where we had removed them two branches at the back. There's only one branch that I think looks still a little bit strange would be this one in the front here. Yeah, I'm gonna remove this branch because it is gonna come off eventually. It is growing from a weird spot. So why not take it off when we can? 
And now on second thoughts, I think with this tree, I'm gonna do something quite drastic, but I think in the long run will be very good for this tree. And because I know that azaleas back bud extremely well, even if you prune them back to a branch with no foliage, I'm just gonna prune this tree in a profile cut to about this height and leaving just a few pieces of foliage on this tree and taking off the majority of this. I'm just gonna wire this branch now up just to fill out the silhouette. And I'm gonna anchor it to this branch. So I'm firstly gonna come around this way. So now I can just position this branch how I like it. Maybe pull on it forward a little. You gotta be very careful with azalea branches because they do have a tendency to crack and snap. So it's just very small movements. And I think for now, that's pretty good. Although we did hard prune this, I think this tree is gonna be just fine. There's just a little bit on top here that we could remove. Maybe reducing it down to about here. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. So I hope that with each of these trees, I was able to give you a slightly different way of approaching trees, depending on how you want them to look. And all that's left to do now is give these trees a water. As a bonus part of this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can propagate your very own azalea bonsai from the trees that we just worked on. So as we were working here, I collected a big bowl of a bunch of the little stems and pieces that we cut off all of the trees. And we're gonna turn these into entirely new trees really easily. Out of all of the species of trees that I have worked on, I would say azaleas would be one of the easiest to root from a cutting. For creating really thin, small, mame type azalea bonsai, I would advise taken a heel cutting and that is when you pull a branch off of a thicker branch like this when I pull this off here it tears and this little end here is what's known as a heel I'm gonna just take off all of the lower leaves so we have this little stem like that I'm gonna dip the end of it here into some water just so that it picks up some of this hormone rooting powder and this powder will really help the azalea root a lot faster you can actually take a little paintbrush too and paint it up the trunk the rooting hormone that I'm using has the active ingredient IBA, known as indole-3-butyric acid. But I've also tried other rooting hormones that you can find in a supermarket and they also root the azalea super easily. I've got these little soft plastic pots for making cuttings in, super cheap and affordable. I'm just gonna fill this one with some multi-purpose compost. I have found that azaleas root really easily in that. Now I would like this azalea to be planted right down this deep here. And that's no problem. Just gonna put the azalea then into the soil. Make sure that it's nice and secure in the pot so that it won't move. Now the best time to take cuttings of azaleas is spring and summer. And I would say in the next couple of months, this little azalea will root fairly quickly in this pot and you'll have yourself a little mame bonsai. Now let's move on to how to root it from a cutting that's a little bit thicker. So let's pick a branch with a fairly thick trunk for this next one. This one should do right here. I'm gonna plant this one as is, but I would first like to make sure there's a nice clean cut on the bottom. So I'm gonna cut straight across. Gonna make sure that's nice and wet and then paint on some more of that hormone rooting powder. Same principle with this one. I'm gonna stick it into soil. I'm just gonna say on a side note, you will have a higher success rate with the thinner ones as they have more growth hormone in them. But I have definitely succeeded with thicker ones like this. So I believe I rooted this one maybe a year ago or two years ago from a cutting. And I also rooted this one, which is also quite thick. So as you can see with these two trees, it definitely is possible to root azalea from thicker branches like these two. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't work for you. I would say start off with the little thinner branches and you'll have a lot higher success rate with them. But if you wish to take a risk and don't wanna take the branches off of these, you can give it a go rooting it with a thicker one. And as you can see now, I have done quite a lot of azalea cuttings and I still have quite a lot more to do. But this is just an idea of how you can propagate your azalea quite rapidly from only one parent plant. And what I like to do is whenever I keep these in a little shaded spot, every so often, I just like to mist the top and it also helps to keep the surrounding area nice and humid. 
And on that, I'm going to end off this video right here. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like down below. It really helps out the channel a lot and the YouTube algorithm. And let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments. And if you would like to support the things that I do on this channel, please consider hitting the thanks button down below. But on that, thank you so very much for watching.